And what's the word? This is the Needed Podcast, episode 36. 36 straight weeks. All thanks to you guys, man. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Uh, we had a great weekend in Vegas. This is going to be a... It's not going to be that long of a podcast. I got my wisdom tooth taken out yesterday. So, the medicine going to wear off within an hour. So, I'm definitely going to have to uh, cut this one. I don't want to say short, but we're going to uh, keep it moving. That's all. That's all. We're going to move through a couple topics. Um, I hope you guys watch this weekend. If you're on YouTube or you're on SoundCloud, please hit the like button. Please comment. Hopefully, you guys can hear me well, man. And um, pretty well. Hope you guys watch this weekend. It was it was actually a super privilege, a super honor to be able to go out there to Las Vegas for the um, WSOE uh, Madden Masters. So it's pretty much E Stars. They've been involved in a lot of different esports and a lot of different things of that nature. So um, it was definitely cool. I, I didn't expect to be a person that went out there. Obviously, um, I believe I'm one of the top five man personalities in competitive man. Uh, and, and the only person I would have put above myself in that four would be Journey. But Journey was not 21, so ha! I capitalized on that. So um, it definitely was fun. Surprising that, I, I mean, I was chosen, but I, I tried to make my best of it. I tried to have fun. I tried to be entertaining, and ultimately that was the goal of the um, the whole event. Um, it was in the Rio, which is kind of off the strip a little bit. Not kind of. It's off the strip. Um, but it was cool because the World Series of Poker was going on uh, at the same time. And also, this was an event we've probably known about for at least a month. And um, really didn't say anything to anybody the whole time. Um, so to me, uh, I didn't really think it was going to be real. At first, I thought this sounds a little fishy, uh, but they actually did a great job. All the production, all the you know the tournament, both the commentating, obviously my guru and RG were on the commentation. All of it was much like an EA event, the same type of thing, uh, and it, it was it was pretty cool, man. I had a lot of fun. Obviously, um, I'm I'm not as good a man as Kiv right now. The one thing about playing Kiv. I don't play Kiv, and I feel like I'm only good like when I get a lot of looks at you. Like I know, kind of know what you're thinking about, you know. And I and Kiv is like five steps ahead of me because I I gotta I gotta get in the I gotta lock in the chamber with him to be able to be. I gotta know he gotta have some weaknesses because when I played him twice and both times he pretty much smoked me. Uh, so I I, I might have to hop on the PS4 just because he don't because I think Skimbo and Kiv are like the same level, but I play Skimbo so much. That it's like I kind of, and I know what he's thinking. I can, I can, I can fuck Skimbo up. And if you guys watch that game, I should have beat Skimbo. But I got that bullshit pass interference. I fumbled. They really cheated me. Uh, but I definitely had fun. Um, hope you guys watched it. We went out there f- Thursday. I had a flight. My flight was delayed Thursday. Got there Thursday night. Turned up a little bit. We'll talk about that later. Friday, we had the media stuff. That's where I woke up at 8 a.m., went through all, all the stuff with me at the cafe. If you guys watched that, drawing the picture, went to the barber shop, went to dinner, all that. Next day, we woke up and we played the games, man. So it was really cool. Got the opportunity to uh, meet Richard Sherman. That was cool. He, he, he I mean, he seemed like a good guy. Talked to everybody as much as he could. Um, played Skimbo, got cheated. Played Kiv, got popped. So I was 0-2. Problem was 0-2. Wasn't my idea. Wasn't my idea. He said, do you want to do Elise vs. Legends? I said, all right, we'll do it. It'll be fun. It'll be something to check and talk about. He said, what team do you want? I didn't know any better. I was like, let me just get the Legends. Apparently, the Legends are way better than the Elites. And for that notion, I decided to bench Michael Vick and use Dan Marino. And I still doubted my way to a victory against Problem. Definitely wanted to get that win. Could not be the person that went 0-3. Sound late to late with the sub, man. I appreciate you. Um, so I went one and two, came away with I believe seven thousand dollars, I believe, which is awesome. Um, I think Kiv had the twelve thousand dollars, I believe. Something like that. Really awesome opportunity uh, for us to just pretty much donate us money, and I hope we did a good job. It seemed like they had over ten thousand people watching it. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed it for real, man. I. I I wanted to have fun. I wanted to stand out. I wanted to be a little bit different. I wanted to bring more energy. The reason why is because, I mean, I, for the rest of my life, uh, there's always going to be people that are better than me and man, I think. And you can always lose a game of man. But to be different and be the one that brings the most energy, 
that can't be duplicated. Uh, so I hope I had fun. I hope you guys watched it. And if you didn't, um, it's not. They don't have a past broadcast for it. I messaged a guy today. He sent me the video, my specific documentary video or whatever it may be. So I have that. But I don't have any of the games or anything. Hopefully they get a past broadcast up and put some of it on YouTube. But I definitely had fun. And if that's something you want to see in the future, this um, kind of, what, what do I want to say? It's invitational, you know? I mean, just let's get some of the best man players that you guys like watching and putting together. Do you guys think that's good? Do you guys think that's good for um, Madden to watch some of us? Because we don't always make it to the events. You know, the events are fun and all, but uh, it's hard to get to, you know? And, and obviously there's great fun in watching the people that earn their way there. But at the same time, maybe Madden be better off having the same people people enjoy watching every time, you know. Um, so, we shall see. Uh, Lake, I mean, what deep topic do you want me to discuss? I mean, we talked about, I mean, probably a couple months ago, we talked about uh, my man Eagle Nation. That was pretty deep. Uh, the event we probably, like I said, about a month ago, it's something, and I'll talk about an event we have this week later later in the show. Um, it's something that you really don't believe it at first, you know. And for me personally, I was like, man, it ain't going to be me. They're going to find somebody else. Uh, but, you don't, like I said, we don't believe it. We didn't really find out, like, our flight information, our hotel information until, like, three days before. But we heard about it for so long, you know. So, at the same time, you don't believe some things are, uh, some things are, um, I said, too good to be true. And I, I've always approached things too good, too good to be true because um, I've had a lot of different opportunities where people sell me a dream and I fall for it and then I get upset that it's not true. You know what I'm saying? So that's pretty much how I feel about opportunities that people give me. I don't believe them until I'm actually on a plane. And I was on a plane to Vegas and it was, it was awesome, man. I had a good time. Like I said, man, is, is that something you guys think will be could be successful in Madden and consistently bringing back the same people? I mean, is it fun watching us play as opposed to, you know, Bazooka Larry or some, you know, half random names that have good names that made it there? Um, you know, I hope they continue to do this, even if it's always in the off offseason. Um, the one thing I had wished is that EA had let us play Madden 20. Now, you think about, I felt like the event was super successful. I really do. Um, but had it been on Madden 20, now you go from 10,000 viewers to 50,000 viewers. Now you go to the biggest event of the year pretty much you know and ea ultimately ea was the reason why it was not on man 20 they made us play man 19 yeah i'm not i i'm my podcast is about competitive madden and what's going on in the competitive man world i mean that's what i love that's what i know about um if there's any serious topics that pop up within the madden world uh, I can definitely deal with those. But as far as me, you know, if it doesn't involve competitive men, we can definitely uh, definitely talk about that. But we shall see. But, yeah, I mean, uh, shoot, the event probably, from, probably, we probably played from maybe 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Saturday. It was cool because... It was a big ass auditorium. Now the World Series of Poker is probably a hundred poker tables in this big auditorium, and then we're on the stage, right? So all these guys are playing poker, and they're they can hear us. It's the, this, the broadcast isn't you know audio throughout the the room, but they have big projections of the Madden game, so they can watch the Madden games, and they can't hear necessarily hear the broadcast, but they can hear us. And there was a couple times, you know, when I started yelling and stuff, because I was the only one that really raised my voice. You know, they heard me. And most importantly, I'll tell you guys, I was playing Kiv. I was playing Kiv, and you guys saw the game. It was ugly. Felt like I got cheated early, but it's okay. But, so I'm playing the game, and, and I'm saying to myself, you know what I'm saying to myself? This game looks damn bad for the broadcast. You know what I'm saying? That's what I said. It looks bad. I'm the one getting popped. You know, it's my fault. So, to me, I'm like, man, let's just get this hype for no reason. I got I to gotta bring some type of energy. So, I had a goal line stand. I'm already down, like, 17 points. It's, like, three minutes left. The game's over. But I have a goal line stand. And, you know, I'm, I'm yelling. I'm screaming. I'm like, let's go. Stand up for yourself. Fight. You never can quit. Show some pride, right? Meanwhile, I'm just doing this because I know the broadcast is boring as hell. RG and Guru are probably talking about dumb shit. Food again. 
And so I'm doing all that, and the, the, the poker players are mad because they're trying to concentrate on poker, and they hear this idiot up here yelling about Madden. So they start heckling me, talking about, look at the scoreboard, idiot, check the scoreboard, you're getting blown out, blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh, shit. As soon as you turn around, you know, they stop talking. That's how it was. So it was definitely kind of interactive, but you're talking about a room. It was probably 500 people at least plus in that room. It was definitely a, a deep population of man players playing for the World Series of Poker. So... That was probably the first time um, since, I mean, man, is 17 that we played in front of that many people, dude. I'm telling you, like, oh, scoreboard. I'm telling you, they were capping. I mean, the point the point was really just to uh, give us recognition that, you know, man is an eSport, and we do have stars, and we do have people that can, you can write articles about, and you can, you know, spotlight their everyday life. It's not... It's not just people behind the scene. And I'll tell you, these guys gave us a lot of raving reviews as compared to, like, the Hearthstone players, you know, the, the uh, Overwatch players, whatever other eSport they did, you know, which are kind of nerdy. I've always said man players are, are more more jocks than they are nerds. You know, that's kind of always our background. We always start playing sports. That translated to video games. So I've always said, you know, man players are more jocks than nerds. Where you go to, like, Hearthstone Overwatch and all the other games, I feel like those people were more nerdy. So they said we did much better answering questions and stuff like that than those players. So hopefully they have it again. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I hope I'm invited back. So I did everything I could. Because I knew, I'll be honest with you guys, I knew I would lose the kid. And I knew I could beat Skimble. I could beat Skimble. I already know that. Because Skimble sucks. Once you know how he plays, Skimble sucks. But I didn't know, I, I knew I had to be problem. So that's why I had to get hit that extra point, block that extra point, man. I tell you guys, all three phases, they're important to the game of football, man. So definitely bring all your energy out on every play that you can. That's what I learned from that, man. So let, I, I, mm. so as far as the event, man, I had a great time. Uh, playing was cool. Uh, getting back up there, I did miss it. I did miss playing, for sure. It was good to be back there playing some type of Madden, for real, for real. Um, so that was definitely important for me and, and it definitely is positive to my future in Madden, whether it be Madden 20, Madden 21, whatever it may be. It was a good vibe, felt good, felt comfortable. And they definitely see Kid was there. Kid, they said they, they told me I was lying. They didn't, Chris Holman said that the crowd wasn't heckling me. They were heckling me when I was down 28 to 6. Uh, I don't think, Taylor, I didn't think it was better than EA events. I thought it was very comparable. I thought it was very similar. Um, Thought they did a good job, in and out. But they called me an idiot. They really got after me. The crowd was not a fan of W because I was too loud during the poker event. So they were definitely airing me out. Yeah, so that's how that went. But it was good playing. I'm excited. Hopefully, be back, man. Twenty, I gotta see what's going on, man. I really did miss it. I missed the money too, man. Like obviously, I made decent money this year between Twitch and YouTube and sponsored deals and selling ebooks I made a lot of good money you know but it's nothing like those Madden checks coming in 20k 40k 15k 66k they all those are the good ones you know they definitely make it a little bit easier you know listen the touchdown celebration was corny luckily I'm not as corny as problem skimbo and kiv so I realized you know that's when I realized you know, I'm not the corniest man player. Problem to the dab. Skimbo. Y'all already know Skimbo's corny. Like, that. Skimbo could be corny and y'all just, uh, y'all just understand it. Like, everybody would just be like, oh, okay, we, we, we're going to be cool. That's that's understandable. That's Skimbo. Like, what the hell? He could be, he could do the corniest thing in the world. That's what y'all used to. And Kiv didn't put no effort into his touchdown celebration. And, then, you know, problem to the dab. You know, so that was corny. But, yeah, I mean, I. I loved it. I thought I, like I said, I had fun. As long as I beat Prime, I was cool. That was my main goal. Went one and two, made like seven grand or something like that. So I felt good. Uh, but now let's get into the meat and potatoes of of the. Obviously, the man part was cool, but we can go to the nighttime, the nighttime stories, right? We're gonna get into the story now. Like I said, we got there. We got there at. I got there at like eleven. Or 10, 30, 11. Um, I did not... How many touchdowns did I score? I scored two versus Skimbo. 
I scored one verse problem. And the, the worst part was, you ain't see my touchdown verse problem. It was a bomb. They missed it because we started playing too quick. But uh, so we get there Thursday. My flight got delayed. It was supposed to leave at 5, land at 8. My flight got delayed till 7, landed at like 10. Got got to the hotel at like 10.30. Skimbo didn't answer the phone. My guru didn't answer the phone. Kid was ready. That's what I tell you. This is pretty much the moral of my story. Kid was ready. He was ready. Kid done elevated. He, he done elevated his, his stature in the Madden partying scene. All right? He done elevated. Now, so we get there. And uh, Kid like, what's up? Went down to the bar. I go throw some jeans on. We down to the bar chilling. Now, the difference between me, the, I'll tell you the difference between me and Kid right here. The difference is when we go to the bar, he ordered a Blue Moon. I ordered a Double Henny and a beer. That's it. That's We drank the same. But his was always just a blue moon. Mine was double honey and a beer. So that's why, for me, things kind of got a little bit out of hand. You know, that's kind of... Blue moon is a douchebag beer. It is. I mean, but Kiv kind of got a douchebaggy vibe. Like, he got that type of... Like, he... Kiv, like, too fancy to really have, like, a Bud Light. You know, he's too fancy for that type. So he got to get a blue moon. Right? But me, like I said, every time he got a blue moon, I get double honey and, and, and a Bud Light or whatever it may be. But other than that, he, he was right on par. So the first night we went there, then we went with Problem. Now, I'm going to ask you this, chat. chat. I'm going to need your guy. I need your help with this, chat. So then we go to the Mirage, because the Rio is kind of bullshit. And it's off the strip. It's like from 1993. It's super bullshit, right? So we go from there. Me and Kid, like, all right, let's go link up with Problem. He just got in. Problem ready to turn up and chill. What's well, Problem just chill. He don't really turn up either. So we link up with him. Kid, once again, order, he order, you know I'm saying, a Blue Moon. I get a Double Henny and Bud Light, you know. Yeah, we, Blue Moon is definitely douchebag beer. I learned that early. I thought it was cool, and then, you know. Anytime there's an orange with your beer, a man, do you think John Wayne was drinking orange, is orange beer? Do you think that was happening? Come on, man. Chuck Norris does not drink orange beer. Do you think The Rock goes to the bar and gets an orange with his beer? No. No. Just think about it, Chad. No. Yes, then the Greyhound drink came out. But then we went to the Mirage. Met up with Problem. Problem was this probably like 11.30. Like, what's up? What's up, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then that's when it, we get put on the Greyhound. They said this is a Just Steel drink. Now, you talk about douchebag type drinks or douchebag type behavior. Jet Steel is number one person. Like, if you want to find some douchebag shit, ask Jet Steel. He will know. And the drink is the Greyhound. It's grapefruit juice, grapefruit juice and vodka, I think. You know what I'm saying? Fred, I'm not playing no goddamn man. We're three weeks away from Madden 20. Stop asking. Damn, it's clearly says podcast. That's what we're talking about, Madden. Damn, sorry, YouTube. Sometimes you got to air the chat out. Like, God damn, I'm telling the story. You're talking about my playing Madden. No. Go watch Underrated King play Madden or some shit, man. Golly. Like, come on, man. I'm in the middle of the story. You want to play Madden? God damn, Fred. Appreciate the follow, Fred. But anyway, back to my story. So we sitting there, and so kids start drinking these greyhounds. Now the greyhounds might have had kid fucked up, like he was he was kind of hurt. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so then we go get something to eat. Cause mind you, I had ate all day because I was in the airport drinking a lot. We got something to eat. I done had two double handies so far, like three beers. So I'm on a little bit. And kid, kid looked like yeah, the greyhounds hitting me. Kid had the same voice for everything. No matter where he is, he in the club, he playing Madden. He talking to a girl. He talking to the producer. He has the same voice. That same, like, hands in the pocket, like, just chill. Yeah, man, man, man. Yeah, I'm kind of fucked up, man. You know, yeah, yeah, It's getting to me, yeah. I need something to eat. That's how just the same voice for everything. So, we go get something to eat. Now, chat, I'm really going to need your help. And YouTube, I'm going to need your help, too. We ordered three things, right? Me, Problem, and Kiv sat down at the, at the bar. We had ordered three three meals. And what I want you guys to do is rank these from the most childish to the least childish. So these are three meals we ordered, right? And you have to rank these meals from the most childish meal to the most to the least childish meal. Now, the three meals were grilled cheese with ham, right? The second meal, mac and cheese. That's it, just mac and cheese, macaroni and cheese. The third meal was fish and chips. Which one of those three meals was the most childish? Fish and chips, macaroni and cheese, or a grilled cheese with ham? What is the most childish? You know what I'm saying? 
Grilled cheese is most. We got one vote for grilled cheese. Most two votes for grilled cheese. Most most childish. YouTube. I need you guys to vote which one's the most childish. I see a lot of grilled cheese answers. A lot of nobody thought macaroni and cheese was the most childish thing you could get. Oh, all right. Okay. All right. Now. I got the fish and chips. I, first of all, I think fish and chips for me when you go to the bar is a very it's a very standard order. I feel like you wanna you know what you're gonna get. It's not gonna be nasty, it's not gonna be great. I like the fish and chips. Nice little two piece of fish fried and some fries. I like that. That's not a bad beer food, right? That's how I feel. If I go to a, a random bar anywhere, I'm gonna grab the fish and chips because I know what I'm getting. That's all I'm saying. Problem got the grilled cheese. Right? Okay, grilled cheese. And he got ham on it. Then go tomato. A grilled cheese, tomato, ham is a that's a good that's a good meal. Right? And mac and cheese, Kiv got the mac and cheese. And the mac and cheese came in a bowl like this. So it, for me and probably would have been two scoops. Kiv, I don't think he finished it. But we were saying that the macaroni and cheese was the most childish. But you guys think grilled cheese it was the most childish. Okay, I understand. You know, I mean it's it, I think it's debatable, you know. Yeah. There was no tomato. You gotta get tomato on the grilled cheese. If you just go straight cheese and, and bread, that's child childish. Yeah, fish and chips is basic. Salad is the word. It's basic. That's all. But just cheese and bread is crazy. No, you need tomato. Nah. So so that was our debate. Whether it was grilled, what was more childish, grilled cheese or macaroni and cheese? So then. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, okay. So, after we get done eating, <coughs> I believe it's probably like 1 o'clock by then. So, this is probably when problem we leave problem. And I don't think we did nothing crazy. We went to Dre's after hours, but I don't want to say we just left problem. And then we... Me and Kid went to Dre's After Hours every single night. Dre's After Hours got about $250 from me this weekend just off the, the, the whatchamacallit, the cover to get in. Easily $250 at least from me. No, I think it was $200. I think it was $70, $70, So that was $190. But, so then we left Prime and went to Dre's After Hours. Now, the first night we went to Dre's After Hours, I had a good mixture of hen, double hennies and beers. I was feeling good. I did not mix any alcohol, any light alcohol. It was all double hennies. It was all beers. So I was on a groove. I told kid I had an X Factor in the club. I was moving. I was on everything. I had dead eye. Dead eye, you know, mid-range, difficult shots. I had everything equipped from Madden into K. I was just moving from chick to chick to chick. Kid was with me. Now at first. At first, the ratio was great in the club. Now, Dre's at the hours on Thursday, they only opened up one little wing. Right? It wasn't all open. Like it is Saturday, Sunday, or set Friday, Saturday. It was just one little area, but we were moving in there. Kev kept ordering Greyhounds. I was ordering double hennies. Give me the double henny. And they put it in a sniffer. That's what they call it, the sniffer. It's like a little, you know, like a little glass or whatever. So I was moving on everything. Um, and, I, I, you know, Kev, Kev is like a little brother, you know, because he's a young boy. He hasn't been in that many environments. You know, I'm kind of a veteran. I know how to move. So I would try to keep my eye out, like, where's Kiv at now? Like, where's he at? Make sure he wasn't in the bathroom calling Earl on some book stuff. That's what books would have been, in the bathroom calling Earl. So I keep, and I tell you, a lot of times I couldn't find him. But I would always find Kiv. This is the way you find Kiv. As soon as you start talking to one girl in a group of girls, Kiv pop out of nowhere and just start talking to the friend. He was on it. It don't matter if I was in a corner. I, he could have been anywhere in the club. If he saw me talking to some chicks, he'd be right up there talking with him. I said, oh, damn, Kiv's really about this shit. Now, because of that, now this is what the pro chat, you guys have to realize. If you're the wingman like that, which is a vital role, it's a vital role. And as me, I'm like the fullback, right? I'm, I, I go, I go, listen, I, I see some shit, I go hit it. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't, I don't have time. I'm older. I don't have time for the, the messing around. So if I see like a group of ladies we want to go talk to, I'm going to be the first man in. I am going to dive on a grenade, right? Yeah. This is, no, but and this, but Kiv is really with it. But the problem with Kiv's with Kiv's role is that sometimes he gets caught dancing with some Mike Tolbert bitches. And I will tell you, Kiv, 
dance with a lot of Mike Tolbert bitches this weekend. And I will give him all the credit in the world. He was really with the shits. 1,000%. He was with the shits. But that was like, he had no choice, really. Because if he was really with, like, if I'm the first one in, obviously I'm going to talk, you know, I'm going to talk to, you know, the, the better looking one. You know, I'm not going to shoot at the, at the, you know, the six foot two chick. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go to the other, the nicer chicks. And because of that, that's what Kid was left with. And he had no problem with it. He never came up to me and said, W, you know, we need to get some other chicks. Because me, early in the trip, I said, Kiv, let's go to a white club. Let's go hang out with Hakkasan. Let's do some fist bumping. This is going to be fun. But no, he was with the shits. He wanted to go to Dreyas. He wanted to go to, to the hood. I said, okay, let's get it. You know, and I, I, if I'm... So, by because of that, he was, I mean, he was on some he was on some joints that he didn't want to be on. The worst night was the last night. And we're going to get to that story. But we still on Friday, on Thursday night. So now, some of these stories I gotta skip a couple hours because not everything built for Twitch and the rest of the public. I gotta skip like a like I gotta skip pretty much every story. I gotta skip from like four a.m. to six a.m. or so. I gotta skip some time because I can't tell y'all everything. Now maybe for the subs only, I might do a video and send it to the subs only. But so we leave Dre's at the hours. I got combined fifteen numbers that week this weekend. I dread the first night. I probably got four. And then, um, so we live in Dre's after hours. Another thing about Kiv. Kiv calls the Ubers. Kiv called the Uber before y'all could even bring it up. Quality, quality partner in crime. The man that calls the Uber before it even becomes a topic of discussion. Always a good guy to have. You know what I'm saying? Calls the Uber. It makes it a little easier because they actually gave us money for Ubers and stuff. Like, they'll give us Uber card or Lyft. They give us Lyft cards. So, free 99. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, Kim always calls Uber. We go back to the, the Rio. We, yeah, say, yeah, we walking through. We meet a little, you know, yeah. And then, fast forward. Now, Friday, we had a 7.30 call time. That means we had to be in the lobby. We had to be in the lobby at 7.30. Now, that's pretty wild. Now, this is a reason why, chat. There's a lot of tournaments held in Vegas. I will never be good in those tournaments. Like, never. If there's a tournament in Vegas, I don't care if y'all watch me play and y'all think I'm the best man player in the world. Don't bet on me. It's not going to happen. Uh, I think I believe I signed up for about four tournaments in Vegas. Uh, the furthest I've met, never made it was Final 16. Um, and I lost taking about three hit sticks with my quarterback. I lost. One tournament, I didn't even make it to the second day. I was like, I was like, the third seed in the whole tournament at the groups didn't make it to the second day. I just didn't show up. So that all leads me to the, listen. So we get to the point where I got to wake up at 730. Now, mind you, between me and you, my phone's pretty much always on silent. So 730 comes, uh, I'm asleep. I, to be, what I wore to bed that night was simply just a sock. I was butt ass naked, but a sock. That's it. So, one sock, not two, just one. And it was half off. Like, you know how your, your sock get on the end of your foot and it's just, like, floppy like that? Like, it's halfway off and it's just flopping like that? That's how my one sock was. So, I didn't wake up. And the producers of the show, they couldn't contact me. You know what I'm saying? And because I wasn't answering my phone. So, they send the security guards up. Now, I get woken up with this one sock on my foot. You know what I'm Just one sock. And, and, and my bed sheet's just covering my strap. Otherwise, I was butt-ass naked. At 8.10, 8.10, I'm getting woken up by two security guards talking about they want you downstairs, they need you downstairs. Scared the shit out of me. No man wants to be woken up by two security guards shaking his foot while he's asleep in Vegas. That never That's never a good look. Scary as hell, I'm saying. So they wake me up. I'm like, oh, shit. Right, because I don't want to be late. This was a great opportunity. You know, I wanted to take advantage of it, be back next time if I was prompt, did all my interviews the right way. I was really excited, so I run down there. Mind you, I don't need no damn shower. Just grab a stick of do. You mean throw your t-shirt on, throw your shorts back on, run downstairs. I said, "What's up? I'm here." They take me to. Mind you, Kiv not even down there yet. Kiv had the same call time as me. Why did they send the security guards after him? Kiv wasn't ready for another hour and a half. That, and that's where we learn the difference, man. I get in it. I just get up and go. Just, just change my shirt and my shorts, and I'm downstairs. Kiv needs an hour and a half, you know, to get ready and stuff. 
So, we were both late. That was a cool day. I'm a little bit hungover, but I'm cool. You know what I'm saying? I'm cool. I don't really need... I'm fine. Like, physically, I'm cool. So, that that morning, we did the cafe shoot. You know, that took that took from about 9 o'clock till 1 o'clock. Then we, they went next door. We, they treated me and the, everybody else to... um. To, to lunch it was like hot pot that Korean stuff where you cook your own food which is bullshit that's I don't know how many of y'all have been to this yet and YouTube asked me this uh, answer man have you guys been to the hot that's what they call it, the hot pot it's pretty much an Asian restaurant right so they put a boiling pot of water in front of you and you pretty much put your meat in the, like you have this this raw meat and you put it in the boiling water and then you mix in little spices and everything, but then you pretty much are eating boiled boiled meat. And I will tell you, this is the most bullshit meal experience I've ever had. Like, I don't understand the beauty. I don't understand why I want to do that. If I, first of all, I, and we went to hibachi the other night. I don't like hibachi. I like. I love the food. I could eat it every night. A whole big plate of you know rice and shrimp. And, I love it. But I don't have to watch, you know, Shung Tzu cook that shit. I don't. I really don't. It's hot as hell. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's grease all over the place. I'm right by the stove. I'm sitting around 15 different people. Half the people I don't know. Why is this shit exciting for people? How many times can you watch Shung Tzu flip the fucking the, the shrimp up in the air? Seriously. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, hot, and hot pots, hot pot takes it to another level. Of, like, come on, bro. Like, that's real. So anyway, that was my lunch. It was kind of, it was kind of food. So then, um, then we went to the barber shop. That's when we got the baldies cut and Kevin Prime did their little set. Then, then we went to Wendy's. Now they had an argument. Kevin Prime had an argument. What's better, Hardee's or Wendy's? I'm a Wendy's man. We don't really have Hardee's that all, that local here in Philly. Not that often. There might be somewhere. But so. But they had an argument. Right, that's another argument. See, Kevin Prime, they, they they argue about everything. That's why I like being around. I'm like the third person. I like to solve all the arguments. So, Hardy's or Wendy's? I'm a Wendy's man. Now, let me tell you about what Kiv get. Listen, if you're a man and you go to Wendy's, the first word out of your mouth could not be junior. You can't get anything junior. And that's what Kiv got. So, Kiv goes from the macaroni and cheese like this. To a junior cheeseburger. Now, maybe this is why Kiv is, is is 130 pounds. And me and Prom are like, you know, well, Prom actually got like 100 pounds on me, which I didn't know. Then we hit Wendy's. Now, now RG, this is why we hit Wendy's. We hit Wendy's because Prom is different. Because we're sitting at the barbershop. I'm like, yeah, we're about, probably about to go to dinner with everybody. Because this is when we had the glitchy dinner. I'll tell you about the glitchy dinner later. But they were like, we're kind of hungry. Let's go get a mini sploosh. Let's go hit Wendy's. Mind you, we're about to go to a steak dinner and shit. I'm cool. I'm like, nah, I'm cool. I, but then, since I was there, you know I grabbed the Baconator. G, you know I grabbed the Baconator just you know, just for like a slight appetizer. Baconator always got to be the order at Wendy's. Am I wrong? Am I right, Chad? Baconator, yeah, Junior is crazy. If you start, listen, you cannot start your order with I want a Junior. No. There would listen... Junior cannot be an option. My son, when I have my son, when he's four years old, he's not getting a goddamn Junior cheeseburger, all right? Well, son, you're going to have to grow, all right? See, son that's son of Baconator is the same as Junior Baconator. That can't happen. But anyway, so we go to Wendy's. Then we go back. Now, I'll give you a little background story about how we got dinner. Um, the D Casino, which is right across the street from the main venue where all the band tournaments are. And, um... The one man tournament, the one where I lost in Final 16, Man 18 Classic Qualifier, that Stevie J won. Skimbo had already won. If you guys remember, Skimbo had a hoodie on in the crowd and sunglasses. He had already won New York the year before. So every time a little break we had in the tournament, he would go over to this casino and just gamble. Now, we didn't know this casino from a can of paint. It was just the closest one to the venue. So Skimbo was gambling. Uh, um, and he was gambling big. And most people, it's in Old Vegas. Old Vegas is like... Uh, I don't want to say the slums, but it's you know not, not the high-priced uh, experience that the main strip is. So we're not used to people betting thousands and on roulette. So the guy comes up to us, the floor manager, blah, blah, blah. You look familiar. Oh, and apparently this guy's a gamer, and he knows man players. He knows Skimbo. He knows W. He knows all these guys. He knows Toke. He watches Toke's videos. So then we get to know him, blah, blah, blah. And that night, we were, it was actually me, Skimbo, and his buddy Cooper, 
who's in here a lot. His name is like Ghost Gooch on here for sure. Um, so he takes us three and says, "You're gambling here. I know you guys. I'll give you four hundred dollars for dinner." So us three go up there and we smit, we kill some dinner. That this was last time down down Vegas, probably about two years ago. And then they, and because of that, then this guy, his name is Eddie. That's the guy that works there. He puts us in a limo to go back to our hotel, which was the Aria at the time. So fast forward to this time, Skimbo hits him up like, "What's up? We're in town." Uh, we want to come down and check out the D. So the guy sends. So after we get our Wendy's, me, Prime, and Kid go back to the Rio. The guys, and we meet Skimbo. Now, Skimbo brought his girlfriend. Um, so Skimbo was, Skimbo's pretty much not going to be in any of these stories. I'm sorry if you guys thought he was going to be in these. He used to be in these stories, me and Skimbo. Skimbo used to be my kid, man. But, you know, I mean, rest in peace to Skimbo. You know, he fought a good fight ever since he put on that pink jersey, man. He's just not the same. He not allowed out. This is the, this dinner was the only time we saw him out. So, but he Skimbo hits up this guy Eddie. Eddie sends the limo, and their limo isn't like a limo. It's like a SUV, like a you know big ass limo with a full bar, all this stuff. So we go in there, and me, Kiv, problem Skimbo, and his girlfriend go there. We hop in the limo. We take some more drinks. Going back, bang. We're going back down. To, or we're going to Old Vegas to the D Casino. It's across the street from the, the one of the Madden venues. Go down there. We go in there. The guy Eddie, like, what's up, man? You guys can go to the gift shop, cop whatever you want. Just get whatever you want. It's on the house. So we get like some T-shirts. Uh, Kiv didn't get nothing. He said nothing was swaggy enough for him. You know, he need the five thousand dollar T-shirts. But we got some T-shirts, some hats some, of the D Casino. Then we go to dinner. They give us another four hundred dollars. Get whatever you want. Um, we got a bunch of steaks, bunch of sides, everything. You know, I'm a wine drinker. You know what I'm saying? So I drank a lot of wine. That's see, that, So I went from the double hennies. You know, I drank some Crown in the limo. I went with two glasses of some Cabernet. I was feeling good. You know what I'm saying? So it was me, Skimbo, his girlfriend, uh, Prime, and Kiv. We we got we ate probably $600 worth of food. $100. So we wound up each coming out of pocket like $70. Uh, and this is where Kiv's a good wingman. He said, W, don't worry about it. I got your dinner. Just keep putting out for all the drinks, you know what I'm saying? The covers, whatever it may be. See, this is why we could always go out because we don't, we didn't really count money. You know what I'm saying? If it's my turn to buy some shit, it's my turn. If I'm with the Uber, it's, it's, you know what I'm saying? And when you go out with somebody that doesn't really count money, it becomes a much more enjoyable experience. So, but mind you, the steak did take out a problem. Prime made this, zip, this is called the zip, zip, zip sauce, like zipper zip sauce. Prime had too much zip sauce. Prime asked for extra zip sauce, which was a, a little glitchy move. He put a little bit too much zip sauce, and he disappeared to the bathroom for a good half hour. We didn't know if we lost him for the night. We didn't know what happened with problem. The zip sauce took him out. And uh, so then we we had left there, went and talked to the owner, said goodbye, whatever. We go back to the casino, to the Rio. Skimbo and his girlfriend disappear. You know, they went their own way. This is probably, I want to probably about 10 o'clock by now. And then um, we met. We actually met up with Guru, RG, and Chow. You guys probably know RG and Chow by now, but y'all definitely know Guru. He was there. So it was us five. And the dude that was doing, like, the other commentator guy, I forget, I think his name was Jack. We were with him, but he pussied out first. He was like, yo, guys, you know, I got a, I got an early call in the morning. So they had, apparently they had a... Apparently they had, like, a 7 o'clock call in the morning. We had, like, an 8 o'clock call. And because I didn't make the one in the morning, I definitely was a little worried about it. So we're at the sports bar drinking, drinking, drinking. Now, mind you, this is when I had all them double hennies, two glasses of Cabernet. On the ride back, this is where I messed up. On the ride back, we were passing around a bottle of vodka, take Grey Goose, and we're taking shots of that right out of the bottle. So that messed me up. So that's when I started. So I started mixing between Hennessy, um... Vodka and Cabernet. That was kind of a net. And mind you, there's like a Bud Light in between every one of these drinks. So it was kind of a net. And a lot of zip sauce. The zip and combo that with the zip sauce. So my I was kind of right here. I was kind of, kind of bubbling a little bit. You know what I'm saying. So, so we get there. So we leave, we leave. Um. We all get to the sports bar, start drinking some more, and then we went up to the the outside bar. It was a rooftop bar in the Rio when me, Guru, and Chow went. Actually, and what's crazy was like, Chow isn't a go out. Chow RG aren't go out guys, but Chow had this V neck in the cut. Now he took his regular lay. He went from regular lay Chow and he put this. 
he put this V neck on top of his regular. No, I say regular leg, like sweat sneakers and a t shirt. He just put a V neck on top, and he was the man. So he went out with it was me, Chow, Guru, and Kiv. By the time we get to the rooftop bar, this is when I'm blacked out. I don't remember. So all I see, all I see is videos of me. Guru the next day, videos of me putting all my moves on. You know, I. This is where we gotta start skipping some parts. I can't fill you guys in on anything, on everything. Just gotta skip some parts. So we're probably we're past probably two thirty now, and I believe oh, what the hell else? It's probably two thirty now. This is Friday, about two thirty. Guru taps out. I will tell you what, Kevin ain't tap out. He ain't even like think about tapping out. He might have had to look like I want to tap out, but he didn't think about tapping out. So we are. It's two thirty. Child definitely taps out. Guru tapped out. So then there's nothing else to do. Actually, we went down to the um. We went down to the the bar. We went down to the um, real bar. So we're chilling at the real bar, and of course, you know, a nice working woman comes up. I was trying to negotiate. I'm a negotiator. You know, I was trying to see what I can get for a reasonable price. So after about another double hennies, Kiv is still drinking Greyhounds. So I'm talking to the working woman, you know, I see what I can get for a reasonable price. She wasn't talking my lingo, you know, so eventually we had to leave, you know, because I really wasn't, you know, I'm not going to be the one overpaying for stuff, especially as it's 2.30. It's plenty, it's plenty more, it's plenty more opportunities for me that evening. So then we go, we say, there's nothing else to do with it. Now it's like 3.30 and it's like, you know, Let's go back to Dre's at the hours. Okay, we're going back. Let's go. Now, at the end of the story, I will tell you guys how I feel about Dre's at the hours now. But I, but that'll be by tomorrow or by the next day. Cause my wisdom tooth is starting to bug now. But so we get back. We go back to Dre's at the hours. We get in line. We pay another fifty bucks to get in. Fifty bucks to get in. By this time, I'm ready to black out. I'm ready to pet. I, I feel it like if I have one more drink, I'm gonna call Earl on this entire dance floor. Like that's how I feel. So by then, and can tell you, the first thing I did when I got in there, I got up there, let me get some water. I need some water. Give me a glass of water. Give me water, 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 water. Cause I I know about the Earl. My head, listen, it was rough. I done had a lot. It wasn't just Greyhounds and Blue Moons. It was pretty much every liquor under the under the moon on Friday night. And then uh. So I was looking around. I was like, all right. I took a couple laps. We were probably in there for like an hour. I don't even remember if I was on them. Kid told me I was I was a little too physical that night. I, um, I was this close to being on the Me Too movement. The way I was I was moving around. The way I was operating with some of the women. I was close to being on the Me Too movement. And uh, that's when he was like, yo, we got to go. And um, we made it back to the Rio. I definitely had to call Earl. I called Earl up in the... I, I think all that zip sauce. Oh, yeah, I called Earl. All that came out of me, man. That was rough. Definitely called Earl. But I felt better. I felt like I was back. I was ready to go back out. But mind you, it was like 7 a.m. So I went to sleep for an hour. Woke up. Somebody called me and woke me up. Had that 8.30 call time to play Madden. Now, the best thing about... Now, I'll tell you guys this. The best thing about being that on is you wake up kind of drunk still. You're kind of still grooving. Like, you can wake up and be like, okay, yeah, I'm still here. If you had one more beer, you're right back where you were. So, now, a lot of people will, will judge me. I was some shit playing Madden. I played with the Eagles, which was stupid. But you guys have to realize, the whole time, I was very intoxicated still. that All that, all that Cabernet and Hennessy and vodka and all them Greyhounds, that does not wear off over four hours. It doesn't. It doesn't happen. You're still playing. I'm still there. You know what I'm saying? It was definitely rough. Now, they'll say Kid was drinking. Kid was drinking for sure. But he wasn't close to my level, chat. I'll tell you that right now. I take it to a new level. But he was on a good level, though. A respectable level. So that was part of the reason. I, so I was, not only was I hungover, I was, the combination of still being hungover and still being drunk it's pretty wicked. And that's how I was playing Madden. Now, people will never understand that. But if we're in Vegas and there's a Madden tournament, 
I am playing hungover and drunk at the same time. That is happening. It was a great time. You have to take advantage of that. So the band happens. It goes from about 9.30 to 3, 4 o'clock. Um, we go back to the Rio. Skimboy and his girlfriend dip off. They have dinner without us. Cool. After Madden, I did not see Skimbo again for the weekend. Um, uh, went to the bar. We were chilling at the bar. Went back, took a shower, because I hadn't taken a shower from the night before. All that Madden, I was funky. I could tell I was funky. And you were meeting a bunch of people and stuff. I was, I was funky. All right? I'll tell you that right now. I was funky. So then I go. So after the Madden, I go and take a shower. I put the suit on. Now I will tell you this, man. If you guys go to Vegas, bring at least a pair of slacks and a nice T-shirt at least. All right? The worst thing you can be in the world is underdressed, man. It really is. And Vegas is a town full of money. Now, I'll tell you this. I don't have money. But God damn it, I'm going to try to look like I have money. That's it. At least, at least don't stand out negatively. That's it. So I go up there, put the suit on, ready to go hustle. Last night, Guru talked mad shit. I'm going out the last night. I don't have to work. Blank. Child and RG talk, man, shit, I'm ready to go. I mean, it's Gamora, boys. That's my guy. I mean, he wouldn't really hang out with us that much, but, you know, he was, I mean, that's my guy. But, um, so we go, we go back to the, we chill at the bar at the Rio. We're just chilling, watching baseball and, uh, talking about life and man, talking about how man sucks. So Guru's ready to go out. We go to, we go to the, uh, Hibachi. Now, I'll tell you, I am a Hibachi fan. I am not a fan of... Like, or just talk about this. The whole, like, just give me my plate of food and let me eat. Chat, is anybody else on the same level as me? Just, I don't want to have to look at my rice for 10 minutes, then look at two shrimp for 10 minutes, then look at a piece of chicken for five minutes, then look at a piece of onion on top of it for two minutes, then finally get all my goddamn meal, half my rice is cold, my other chicken is cold, or do I eat it while he's giving it to me, but then I only wind up with a little ass plate of steak? I don't know how I want to operate. What's the move? I don't know how hibachi is this damn popular in the world. I really don't. You know? There's nowhere to move. I'm shoulder to shoulder with everybody next to me. I can't reach out. There's a damn stove right here. Soy sauce, all this steam all in my face. Why is this the move? No, okay, it's a date restaurant. Okay, so my girl is here and some random, you know, Jimmy is next to me over here. So how, how is that that great of a date? It's not romantic. It's not intimate at all. What's so great about it? Chat, I want you guys to tell me, what is so great about hibachi? I would rather go to a place, get my plate of food, hand it to me, and say, go ahead and eat. It's all hot, ready to go. How, what is entertaining about the hibachi thing? Please tell me, what is it really that entertaining to see somebody? <laughs> with, how many times do you have to see it as a human being? You know what I'm saying? How many times? You know what's going to happen? Shit, by now I've been there 20 times. I can goddamn get up there and do the tricks my damn self. I damn sure can make a little Pac-Man out of rice and go, 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 ha, 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 ha. I damn sure can make a little volcano with the onions. Come on, chat. You guys know the same damn tricks every time. Like, for real, I, I feel like it's overrated. That's all I'm saying. But that's where we went. Went to Hibachi for dinner. I definitely got another Cabernet at dinner there of Hibachi. Have to keep drinking. Feeling groovy. Had to recover from last night, but I'm good tonight. Uh, we wound up we wound up going back to the same. Actually, we went back. I was chilling with RG and Child. Me and Kid was just talking. We wound up talking to them probably until like 1 o'clock. And then Guru was up at the hotel bar, or at the rooftop bar again. Went up there. We was kicking it with, with um, Guru. Now, this is where... This is where not everybody was on, on me and Kid level. So we get up there to the, to the rooftop bar. We get up there. Now, me, myself, dub, dot, w. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get a drink, right? But then if you're with five guys, right, Chad, talk to me. I've always been the type, like, one, Kiv is my guy. That's been, like, my man. Everywhere, me and Kiv just went everywhere. So I've always felt like if I'm buying a drink, Kiv won't get a drink, right? But then how do I get Kiv a drink and not the three other guys that's with me a drink? Like, where's my limit? So I got everybody a drink. Cool, right? But in Vegas, when you buy somebody, when you buy five drinks, you're looking at hundred dollars. Boom, that's a hundred. That was more than I paid for my hibachi dinner. Boom. Okay. So in my opinion, I feel like it's going to come back around, right? 
after I'm done this beer and this shot, somebody's gonna come get the next round, right? Everybody kind of disappeared. My man RG, RG don't see RG not the one like I look at it, like he gonna be the one to recipe. cause RG he don't be out. He was just kicking it. He just came out to kick it with us. Respect. But my man Guru, what's up? I can't get the round reciprocated. That's all I ask. So then we're at, so we're at the rooftop bar. After that, I'm just grabbing drinks for myself, man. I'm chilling. Came over there on the Greyhounds. And uh, we went from the rooftop bar. The rooftop bar was kind of asleep that night. And um, so then we were just kidding with me, me, Kevin Guru. And it was like, no, nah, the rooftop, honestly, the rooftop was cool. And the real, because it was off the strip, it wasn't as highly priced. Alain, you're right. But so then we go with Guru. And we just chill with me, him, and Kevin. We look at each other like, yo, it's time to go to Dreas. Three nights in a row. We back at Dreas. Now, I was moving. I wasn't ready to pass out. Friday night, I was ready to pass out. Right? I really was. I was it was over for me. But Saturday night, I was moving. I was back to X Factor. X Factor W. The problem is, the third night ratio was not that great. And this is the night. The ratio was so bad. Kiv danced with the worst chick he danced with all week. He was stuck with the worst chick ever. She kind of looked like some serious. Some serious, but she had, like, little dreads. Not, like, long dreads, but, like, little dreads. It was some serious with little dreads. I promise. It was bad for Kiv. Like, body and all, bro. It was bad. But he was with the shits. That's why it's like, yo, he was really with the shit. Yo, he was, he was bopping. He was here with it. He was here with it, right? But then you look at his face, he was like. Now me, and Kim could attest to this. I understand when a situation is bad for my homie. I understand when it's a bad situation for my homie. And I will bail on a situation if it's bad for my homie. But Guru don't care about his homie. <laughs> no. No, he don't care. He was with the mission. He was ready to see that shit out. I was like, I'm out. I'm bailing. I will bail on a mission. <laughs> I'm ready to bail. Because I started thinking, my bitch is not bad enough for me to make my man go through this terrible situation. That's what it comes down to, chat. If you're with Halle Berry, yes, Kiv is going to have to talk to something serious for the night. Yes. You know what I'm saying? But if you're with a chick that's, bleh, you can't put your man through nothing crazy like that. That's the rules. Like, it kind of has to get to the point where, 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 um, whatchamacallit, where Kiv has to understand and be like, this is all right. You know, I'm cool with hitting some serious for the night. I'm cool with that. Because my man is, my man is, he, he's got something worth it. But the chicks we were talking to weren't worth anybody going through anything. So I bailed. So I walk away. Next thing I know, these bitches at the bar. What? How you bring them to the bar? That means now they're going to cost us $100. No. Stay as far away from the bar as possible. Now here come my chick looking like Urkel with, with lashes on and shit. You want to buy me a drink? Damn it. No. I don't want to buy a drink. No. No. God damn it. Then, here go the worst part. It's five minutes later. I'm looking at Kim. Like, where Guru at? Oh, he left. Now I'm stuck with these bitches. He done left both of us with these. Bruh. Guru left. He set us up. He's like, yeah, I'm going to bed. And he left. I don't say no. I, yeah, I bought her a drink. What else? I'm not a broke. I'm not broke. That's see that that type of shit is corny. Like if you, I just feel like if I'm gonna dance with a chick, I'm gonna talk to her because I approached her. Because that I'm be honest, I was the battering ram. I will always be the first man. In the I will always, like I say in football, I will always leave it all on the line. I will always be the first man in the foxhole. Always, you know what I'm saying always. So I, yeah, I'm the fullback, baby. I'm in that joint. Lee hole. You know what I'm saying. 
So I approach the chicks. So if I'm gonna I'm dance with you a couple times, talk to you, and you, act, I don't want to go anywhere near the bar. If the club, if the, the dance floor is here, the bar is here, we're over here. We're gonna just congregate over here, right? That's all we're gonna do. I don't want to. I don't want to go anywhere near the bar. The bar to me is a fifty dollar bill at least. Also, chat. Here's another thing. Here's another thing, chat. You talk to a woman in the club, right? She has two friends with her. That's her group. If you go to buy the woman a drink, do you just buy her one drink or do you buy one for her friends? Now, me, I'm the type where if I'm going to buy one drink, I got to get her friends a drink. Because if her friends don't like you, they're going to be like, no, we're not leaving. We're staying here. We're not hanging out with them. Fuck them. He didn't buy me a drink. That's pretty much how I feel about that. What do you guys think? Chat, talk to me. Do you buy the whole squad a drink or do you buy it just for the girl you're talking to? Got to buy the whole group. Even a bigger reason why, even even a bigger reason why I don't want to go near the bar. Right? You Patriots fan, that's you can't just, it's tough to just get one though. I'm telling, but that's why I want to stay away from, I don't want to go near the bar. And it's worse, it's worse, and I'll tell you this now. That's why I don't want to drink that much. If, it, if you get to that night, I'm already on. I really don't care anymore. Of course, it's drink hustle. That's okay. And if you're a man, and this is what I tell you. If you're a man and you're not prepared to buy, you know, X amount of drinks going out for a night, then you should stay your ass at home. You got to be prepared. Obviously, I don't want to at all. Hell no, I don't want to buy anything. But I'm also prepared to if that's what, where life leads me. If I, if I got some if I got good vibes going, I'm prepared to. I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. It's not about, you know I'm saying? You just got to be prepared to do that. You know what I'm saying? Buy a bot. Vilma, see, Vilma's talking like he's in. Vilma, Vilma never gets out anywhere. Like, this is so bad. Buy a bitch a bottle and tell her come over. What are you, wait, Vilma's 17 years old again. Jesus. No, these chicks were terrible. No. No, I didn't want to buy nothing. No. And you know what? I did good. This I don't think I bought anybody a drink. Anybody other than my homies. That's it. I think I did really good. That's some buy a bottle. Tell a chick to come over. What? Who falling for that in Vegas? Plus we're in the real. Yeah, baby. You want to leave Dre's and come to the real? I got a bottle of E and J Peach. Like what? Nobody's falling for that. But these chicks were terrible. Guru just left. Guru left us. No, these. Are, I didn't buy hoes drinks. Don't let me let me tell you something. I've been. I'm. I'm. I'm new to this. Or you new to this? I'm true to this. If you listen, that's what I'm saying. If you're not prepared to buy drinks when you go out, then you shouldn't be out. I'm saying that's all. E and J Peach. If you're not prepared to buy some drinks, then stay home. Then you're not prepared to go out. Pedro's fan, the man bun is glitchy. The man bun is glitchy. Marm, listen. I That's what I'm saying, Jay. What's a sucker? Now I'm, let's go drink E and J. Like yeah, y'all really operate like you're still in high school. Y'all really still in high school. That's how y'all operate. It's cool, man. I, and one thing I got to realize when I stream, when I talk, a lot of you guys are like 16. It's okay, man. You guys will get older and understand, man. If you don't have a couple dollars to buy some drinks, I mean, you got to stay out. Or you should go to work, really. That's how I feel. If you, <laughs> you should be working rather than being out at the club, really. But anyway, that's a that's another topic. So we had Dre's at the hours. After Guru left, he went to bed. He said, you know, this isn't for me. Left for, went for bed. And then... We uh we go back to the Rio. I gotta skip a bunch of this story, blah 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 blah. blah. But Kiv did Kiv did bag us some joints. I don't know what happened to him though. He never wanted to follow through. I don't know why he didn't want to follow through with these joints. But it was two chicks. We just met in the elevator, and Kiv told him this was like the random time during that. Kiv told him I'm a man player. We're man players. She didn't believe us. They found Kiv on Instagram. So Kiv started following the joint. She was cool. Her friend was kind of bullshit. But now I'm in a position where I got to take the little, hang out with the little bullshit one. 
I got to. That's just me. I have to. Because now he got the okay one. He finally got us some white girls. We were excited. You know. Now, mind you, she followed Kiv, but she wouldn't let Kiv follow her back. You know, she wouldn't allow that to happen. Now, Kiv hit her up and said, why won't you accept my friend request? So, what happens was, listen. So, Kiv says, why wouldn't you expect, why wouldn't you accept my friend request? So, then she's like, oh... I'll accept it. So then, boom. Once she accepted Kiv, see all these pictures, all her Instagram was her boyfriend and her kids and everything. I was like, what? So that was crazy. And uh, so Kiv was talking to her all weekend, but I don't know what happened. He never really wanted to, like, follow through. I was cool with And this is where, I'll tell you, this is where I wanted to get that bottle of E&J and hang out. That, But I don't know, Kiv was there. I would always ask him, what's up with him? He's like, oh, they good. They guaranteed. I'm like, all right, what's up? I don't know. So, but then he had too many greyhounds, and we forgot about them, Jones. For real. So that was pretty wild. And then, um, like I said, that that night I had a flight at eight o'clock. I made it. Eight o'clock. They said I wouldn't make it. I made it. Kid made his. It was crazy. Is I when I left Kid for whatever reason when we parted, we really didn't say bye enough. I wanted to make sure he was cool because I started feeling bad a little bit. You know, I was like, you know, I'm a little bit older. Kid is he like 22, 23. Um. Maybe I should have been more responsible. Because at some point, Kiv is no longer like this little... He's like my man. Like, I I don't have to worry about him no more. Like, it's, you know what I mean? That's kind of... I just completely forgot the fact that, you know, Kiv is a little young boy. Like, maybe he not all right. I make sure he's cool. And I didn't make sure he was cool. Then I text him and he didn't answer me for like six hours. He was probably on his flight. So I started worrying. Like, damn, maybe he passed out on, on, on in the casino somewhere or something. But, uh... He wound up being cool. I was cool. Everybody was healthy. I made my flight. I made it home. Then my wisdom tooth bugged. I had to get pulled out yesterday. So my face is really numb and it's starting to hurt already. But it was a good trip. We definitely had a good trip. And uh, we had some fun times. And for that reason, man, I got to go to the, the all-man and turn up squad. From the people I've hung out with, from the people I've hung out with in, at these man tournaments for the last three or four years, who is, like, the wolf pack of everybody? Like, if I had, like, a five-man squad or even, like, a ten-man squad. That's why, like, who, and you guys can help comment on this, people that you've gone out with. Like, who are the main people you guys would want to go out with and who was the most fun you had going out with? So, for me, um, Kiv has elevated to prime. He, he in the top tier now. Top tier, always got Carrie in there. Mark Dog always got to be in there. And my man uh, Strafen is in there. Guaranteed. All right? So they are pretty much, those are like my guarantee. For, now I got to put Kiv in there. Did I put Kiv? What I say? I said Carrie, Kiv, Mark Dog, Strafen. Those might be, you know what I'm saying? Old Skimbo might have been up here. And I will tell you why. Actually, sk- listen. Skimbo wouldn't be up here. He might be a notch below, but I will tell you this. Skimbo, one, he would only go out. If we got prime Skimbo, he'd be in the list. But we only get that. We we only get prime Skimbo one night. Like, if it's a man tournament, he only won't party the last night. He's not going to go out. But now he now he's, you know, he's was cuffed up. So he, he can't be on the list. So that's probably my top. Vilma always ride out with me. See? The problem with Vilma is he always on that, let's get the E&J bottle and go back to the crib. He doesn't have clothes. He all He's always in sweatpants. He can't get the anything that's above anything. Like, like Vilma can't get anywhere because he never has clothes. He dresses like he dresses like a 12-year-old. That's it, you know? Boogs. Boogs is another one. Dresses like a 12-year-old at all times. A 12-year-old dresser. And doesn't drink. Uh, he's not nowhere near Vilma. Vilma, I'm telling you, Vilma would just if he would just get 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 the little sweatpants slacks that he has and some nice at least all black sneaks. He he would be in the upper echelon because he don't stop. He drink. He don't, he ride out. Bugs is definitely Groot. Bugs might be baby Groot. I am Groot. <laughs> now Bugs, I Bugs would have a drink. Um, we went out and we went out in Huntsville. He was riding out pretty much. Exactly. See, Strafing though, Matt. And, and man, seventeen, we both lost, man. We both and and, and straight from to tell you, we were. It was my thirtieth birthday. 
We were at Sam's probably until 6 in the morning and just turning up. My 30th birthday, we had to play the next day. I want to say he played first. Or I, I either played first or second to first. I don't remember. Heavy Medicine, but this is where I don't think Madden players fall into that category of video game players. I think they're more jocks than they are video game players. You know, I think they're not nerds. So, I think it's a little bit different. And, um... Yeah, so I would say Strafin, Mark Dog, Carrie, Kiv. T. Davis be out. T. Davis be out. Stevie J? Stevie J, a sneaky party guy. I'll tell you that. Now, Vim always pissed me off for not having clothes like Mr. Man doesn't. Man definitely has nerds, but I will tell you. Not everybody is Jacoby. All right? Oh, yeah. Speaking of that, J himself, V Tech. Different type of turn up. You know, they're not the go-to-the-club type, but they'll go to the bar and drink. They will out-drink all of us. They're a different type of turn-up. I'm trying to think who else will go out. Rico, obviously. Rico Rico and Guru, they're like... Rico and Guru is all you need, really. Um, I'm trying to think who, who else. But me and Bugs, they go out in Huntsville. He had three drinks. Yeah, Joe Wright's definitely kind of nerdy looking. I think I'd take him for a nerd. Um, but who who else you guys think? Let me think about. Ah, oh, man, I can't even think about somebody else, though. T. Davis and Stevie J, they'd definitely be on it. What's crazy is, and Kip will tell you this, when we were in the man for the man classic this year, T. Davis had an attitude going into the club. We've got a section in uh, Jewel Nightclub in Aria. So T. Davis was like, yeah, I'll never talk to these, Joe. Mr. Bird. Mr. Bird is glitchy. He is glitchy. He's not top tier, but he's kind of glitchy. But this is what's crazy about T. Davis. Now, I'll tell you this. And Kim, Kim can attest to this. When we walked into the club, right, I'm over here to Kiv like, yo, that's not bad. When it gets a little later, that's not bad. Kiv like, Ter- terrible, John. Not terrible, but she was a little thick. You know, she wasn't Mike Tolbert, but she, you know, she might have been Fletcher Cox. You know what I'm saying? And not, not, not that fat, but you know, she was kind of husky. And then T. Davis next to her was like, oh, hell no. I never, dog, nah, y'all tripping, right? That's what he said. Y'all tripping. That, that, that's what, no, that's what I'm saying. This is what T. Davis was. Oh, y'all tripping. Y'all tripping. You know what I'm saying? That's what, that's T. Davis. Like, never could I. Never could I. So we in the club in the section. You know, I'm moving. X-Factor ability, zone ability, locked and loaded. Good to go, right? So we're good. About, you know, 1 o'clock, come on. Here go T. Davis. What he doing? Oh, he dancing on Fletcher. Okay. Not bad. 145, come on. Oh, oh, Fletcher sitting on top of him. Okay. Okay, T. Davis. Oh, you on Fletcher now, huh? Okay. You ain't like Fletcher to begin with, but you on Fletcher now, huh? Next thing you know, 2 o'clock, he tongue and Fletcher down. Okay, T. Davis. Okay. Next thing you know, I think one of Fletcher titties is out. I said, whoa, this is, Fletcher is getting bad. I'm trying to tell you. I, I That's not bad. You know what I'm saying? That, and I'm like, bro, how can you? That's why I'm telling. See, a lot of these kids don't have experience, man. When it gets later, that's what you start saying. I'm There's two sayings. That's not bad. And he say, I done hit worse. I, that's what T. Davis said. I done hit worse. You know what I'm saying? I just want people to accept it earlier in the evening. Sometimes I accept my fate early in the evening. Like, yeah, I might be on that later. That's not bad. And he didn't accept it. But that's but that's pretty much uh I, I think about other people that turn up. Mr. Bird, J. Bird definitely rides out. I wouldn't say he turned out, but he definitely rides out. It's a difference. Like he'll always be up, turning up with us, having a good time. Um Rico and Guru is top of the they top of the totem pole as far as like the commentator type people. Um, I don't know. Skim was up there, man. Skim changed now. He's more corporate Skimble now. Yeah, beer goggles for Rumble. Oh my God, bro! We got too many stories. I can't tell the strip club story. Rumble. Oh my God! All right, we got time. How much time recording? Oh, we have just over an hour. Let's go. Rumble story. This rumble story. So we're up in New York, 
I don't know why the hell Rumble. Why Rumble came out to a New York tournament. I don't know why the hell he did this. It might have been Man 17 or 18 or something, whatever it may be. So we're in New York. That's where Vilma lives. We actually had met up with um with Evilo. He was leaving with his girl Drag. Uh, I want to say Grocery. No, Warhawk, Droops, and those guys and like Swizzy and stuff. They were at Evilo's house, and I don't know where the hell he lived. So, so I, mind you, I'm just with Rumble. I'm with Rumble, Vilma, and my man Elite. Like, I don't see these guys that often. We're not going to sit in the house and play mad. And that's what, like, Evil O and Warhawk and them were doing. We're like, all right, we're going out. Vilma don't go anywhere but strip club. You know, yeah, he's weird, chat. That's okay. He's weird. So, we go to strip club. Oh, we're, somehow we're already on. I don't know. We were on. So and, and and Rumble, you know, he's a little nerdy looking guy. I, a lot of you guys don't know because he ain't been around the last two years. But Rumble's nerdy. He has no hair, but still keeps the hair. Like when you have no hair and you're like my age, you gotta cut it all off. But he still keeps the hair like Van Gundy. That's what he does. So Rumble is like pretty much the whitest person you know. And we go to the hooded strip club. So we go to the hooded strip club. When we go to the hooded strip club, one the ATM fee is twenty dollars. But we go in there. Now, Vilma, you know, he the cheapest motherfucker in the world. He said, oh, I'm just walking around the block till I find another ATM. So, me, Vilma, and his buddy, I believe Martin or somebody, we start walking around looking for another ATM. Rumble's already in there. He even paid his cover. <laughs> Rumble paid his cover. He's in the strip club already, right? We went around the block looking for another ATM. I don't even think we found another ATM. So, probably about 20 minutes. We walk back in the strip club. We got our cover. We go in. I'm like, yo, where my man Rumble at? I'm looking around. Rumble is in this section with two strippers dancing on him. We say, what the hell is going on? Then Rumble come up to me. Ten minutes later, I said, damn. I, so I go to Vilma, I'm like, damn, they got Rumble for everything, didn't they? He like, yeah, they got him for everything. So he comes up to me after that, he says, yo, they won't let me take any more money out the ATM. <laughs> Hit the ATM, I'll cash you out tomorrow, I promise. Let me pay pay you right now. I'm like, there's no way I do that. Not happening. So I said to Mike, yo, that's not happening. Yo, we're not, I'm not taking no more money out for you. And then we saved them. And then we went to, where we go? IHOP? Wherever we went to eat. First of all, we super on. We all fell asleep in, in, in Vilma's car. I don't know how it happened. We all fell asleep in the car. It was like five of us, and we were sleeping in the car. At like six in the morning. Just rocked. Rumble was like hanging out. Like... I swear to God, like, his top half was in the seat, and his bottom half was still sitting outside the car. Like, bro, that shit was not a good night, man. Just a bad night. A charger. Bro, it was bad, heavy. And it was definitely rough that night. But I'm done. Rumble might, he might be in top tier because of that night. Because he was riding. But we, I'm going to tell you guys something. We're going to find out who's in top tier this weekend. You know why? Because I want to tell you guys about this cruise we're going on. Me and Clef going on a cruise this weekend. You see this right here? Tournament on board. NFL 2K19 and NBA 2K19. I don't know where the hell they got NFL 2K19 at, but that's what we're going to be playing. So if any of you guys want to cop tickets to this cruise, not cheap. But we will see what Clef got as far as turning up. Click button to sign up now. Let's see what they got. Bang, first name, last name, email address, signed up. But it says tournament winners receive tickets to the Super Bowl. It's kind of fire. <clears throat> I will tell you who's going to be there. This is the Days of Summer Cruise. Me and Clef will be there hosting this man tournament. They hit me up and said, yo, we want y'all to host this man tournament. I said, all right, that's what's up. I could win both. I'm definitely going to practice. I need to lab up my 2K. But but we're, they paid us to come out there and host. But it's going to be Post Malone, Cardi B, DJ Khaled, Lil Nas, The Baby, City Girls. So it's definitely going to be Ratchet. Days Loaf, Waka Flocka is definitely going to be super Ratchet. You know what I'm saying? But the, it isn't cheap pricing. This is what you got to do. You got to buy one of these. An interior room, two people, 1200 Ocean. We, they put us in a balcony room. You know what I'm saying? 
But yeah, they hit me up. And they said, you know, we're going to go ahead and, and really uh, get this popping. So I'm excited about it. You know what I'm saying? I'm definitely hyped. That's what it is. And I, listen, I'm going to show you this while we watch that, man. Yeah, so that, I'm not worried about the tournament. We're, I think they got us just hosting the tournament. You know what I'm saying? We're not, I don't think we can play in it. So trust me, we're definitely uh, excited about this opportunity. I think we'll only do a man. I really honestly don't know. But it goes to the Bahamas. Yeah, Journey one be Journey ain't both for this type of vibe, you know what I'm saying. Bang. So that's pretty much, I mean, that's 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 what me and Clef getting ready to get into this weekend. So y'all going to see tons of pictures, man. If y'all don't already follow us on social media, make sure y'all do that. You know what I'm saying? It's definitely going to be fun. Oh, I don't even see what this one looks like. Oh, what's this, what's this video? Oh, it's some Tolberts. I see some Tolberts. Oh, that was it? I don't say no more. But yeah, that's what we're doing this weekend, man. And, and then also, last thing I want to tell you, man, is that if you guys are interested in ebooks, if you're interested in Man 20, man, Needed Gaming will be partnering again with Man Turf. So all you guys looking out for Clef ebook, for W ebook, W tips, all the things you want for offense, defense, special teams will be on Man Turf this year, man. We will. We spent a lot of time the last couple of weeks negotiating, figuring out what was most comfortable for needed gaming. And we figured that out. So Man Turf will definitely be popping. We will keep that popping all year. And I'm excited to go ahead and do that. Yeah. Vert ebooks on Man Turf. Vert, Vert, I'm telling you, next year, next year I'm doing something big time. I'm, I'm going to need y'all help for next year. You know, I'm working on it now. It's going to be something that changes sports gaming forever. But for this year, we are on Man 20 for all the ebooks, man. So if you guys want to check that out, make sure as soon as we announce the price of the premium membership, that means you're going to get every single thing we put out. So it's definitely going to be tough, man. But that's between the crews. This weekend, man, definitely stay up on pictures and Instagram. Follow that Instagram. I'll put it in the chat for you guys. It is below. It is below in the YouTube comments, man. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, please do that because... We, we definitely if we do that you want to catch everything man for real I already know it's going to be something real next year but this year man turf we're going to keep it popping we want IG live everything so make sure you guys follow that if it's in the chat I just put it right there if you're in the chat it's 160 people in here I should have 160 new followers because I know all y'all don't follow me on Instagram but and if you're on YouTube same thing man I know this video going to get 500 views or something that should be more Instagram followers because that's where we'll get it popping Clef as well y'all already know that we're going to have a good time and uh, getting on that cruise so uh, this was the Needed Podcast episode 36 talking a lot about Vegas and turn up I had a great time um, it was fun to be back uh, around my friends and around the man community man I missed it a lot Man 20 will definitely be special for me. We shall see. Updates coming soon on whether or not I will perform or what compete next year in Man 20. We shall see. Uh, definitely have fun this weekend, man. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And hope you guys really hit that like button and really enjoy the podcast. This is 36. I think we only have like four more left until Man 20 is out, which is good news because, man, I'm getting tired of talking about Man 19. We're getting tired of talking about uh, Man 20. 
Alright, we're getting tired of talking about playing Madden 19, talking about Madden 19. We want a new game. This is always the vibe at the end of the year. Uh, so definitely something that I'm waiting for is this Madden 20, man. My Instagram is right here, chat. IG right there, boom. Click that up. Let me see, man. Y'all go ahead, hit these follow buttons. Okay, I got one follow. Okay, no, no link. That don't work? I just got four new followers. Boom, I got four new. I'm saying why what it's not popping up it's popping up on my screen I don't know but anyway YouTube it is below uh, in the description so you check that out IG will I post most of the stuff from this cruise it's gonna be fun I'm saying make sure you guys <clears throat> check out all them links but this was the need a gaming podcast the episode 36 Appreciate y'all coming by, checking out. Hit that like button and hit that subscription.